welcome to Men at the Movies, the YouTube channel. My name is Paul McDonald, and this week we are talking about UHF, that classic 1980s Weird Al Yankovic movie. In part of the podcast, we talked about this idea of friendship involving your friends. And so I wanted to, to discuss that aspect a little bit more, show an example of how George, Weird Al's character in this, this movie, actually sort of... He actually exemplified the approach that Jesus took when calling his disciples. In Mark 1, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. And when you go on to chapter 2, Jesus once again walking along the lake shore and teaching the crowds. And as he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said. So Levi, and that's Matthew, got up and followed him. And then you see another example in John where once again, it's, it's the same thing. Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. Like we just said, Andrew saw Jesus, followed Jesus, went and brought his brother Simon, who had become Peter, and brought him in. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said, come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, we found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. So, so right there, we've got Nathaniel, we've got Philip, we've got Simon, we've got Andrew, we've got James and John. That's half of the 12 disciples. And then you've got Matthew. So over half of the disciples, sort of in this really small group that Jesus just seems like he's just stumbled across. So one of my friends, Patrick, wrote, we were, as we're reading through the Bible, we're taking notes sometimes about once a week, maybe once a couple of weeks, uh, somebody will write something. But what he wrote was really interesting. He said, I found it interesting that after Jesus called Simon and Andrew, he quote, walked down the beach a little way and found James and John. And these are, you know, there's four people, four of his disciples. And we talked about Nathaniel and Matthew and, uh, and Philip and how he found them. And again, there's seven now, seven of the 12 disciples just sort of within a few feet of each other, almost like he's just walking along, sees a dude standing there and says, Hey, come and follow me. He didn't have to put, this is what Patrick says. He didn't have to put a solicitation out on disciplematch.com or hire headhunters from India, Ethiopia, or Macedonia to find the most elite disciples in the world. What are the chances that the 12 that God would trust with carrying the gospel to the world were right there next to him, just a few feet away? And what can we learn from this? Are we looking too far away for our calling or blessing or ministry or brotherhood? Or is it available just a few steps away? And my boys play, play, play football in high school and we, we enjoy fantasy football and, and it's that time of year now. And I told them, I, we joke around because the, the most important ability is availability. And we might want some sort of job that fits our calling perfectly. We, we might have this idea for what our brotherhood, what our community, what our closest friends should look like. You know, it's, oh, they should all play golf or they should all live close, you know, within a five minute radius or they should do this or they should look like that. And what we can learn from Jesus and what we see from George is the most important ability is availability. Come and follow me. And we see that with Stanley Spadowski, where George sort of stumbles across this situation where Stanley's now left without a job. He's broken. He's like, he lost his mop. He's like, hey, why don't you come work for me? And then, hey, Stanley, you want to be a TV star? And it's not like George is some phenomenal coach like we see with Adam Sandler's character from Hustle. He offers that job to Stanley just as a way to say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not good at it. Why don't you do it? He's feeling lost. He's feeling broken. 
And that's how Stanley becomes the hero that rescues the TV station is the opportunity. He is available. And we see as that the story develops, uh -huh. George's best friend becomes his business right, manager. Thanks a lot. Okay. Their friend Cooney becomes, he, they ask him to leave the karate school and says, Hey, come do wheel of fish. You constantly see that George doesn't have this sense of criteria, this, this application process for people to go through. He simply says, are you available? Come and follow me. And that's what we're called to do with our ministry, with our calling, with our brotherhood, with our community. Don't look, don't focus on going somewhere or doing something. Focus on what you do now. My dad, he has, we've gone to Uganda a few times and he's always had a heart for uh, sort of an international ministry, but more for welcoming international people to his home more than going overseas. But he's as, as he's an elder in the church and he would have people come to him. I feel like I need to be called to missions. I feel like I'm called to missions. I feel like I'm called to missions. And the question becomes, and he says, well, what are you doing now? Because they might think, oh, I'm supposed to be called to the, the, the heart of Africa or the depths of South America or Asia or wherever. But the question becomes, what are we doing now? What is, what is, how available are we? And so that's my challenge for you today is how can we be like George and not keep looking past the horizon for what we can do, but how we can look at who's in front of us and how those people can become our ministry and our calling and our community of brothers that we really, our hearts need uh, to surround us. So check out our full episode of our podcast, UHF. It's available now everywhere you get podcasts. Links are down below. Uh, like us, share us, subscribe, do all the things. And I hope to see you next time here on Men at the Movies, the YouTube channel.